Hello fellow YouTubers, welcome to YouTube Gaming Community. I'm your host Trouble835. So today I have a question for you, a discussion for you for my topic today to discuss in the comments below video response and that is do you think people can make YouTube too much a part of their life? And when I say, what made me think about this is now in the age of how the internet and technology works is okay, you make videos on YouTube, you watch videos on YouTube, you respond to videos on YouTube. And in some cases, maybe YouTube is the major form of entertainment that instead of the television, what used to be the major form of entertainment where families would watch stuff, maybe you watch YouTube videos. Maybe that's your form of entertainment. And you go to Facebook and you go to Twitter and it's all about YouTube. And you go into Google Hangout and you're in Skype and it's all about YouTube. And what seems to happen is some people, in my opinion, some people get so caught up in YouTube that they eventually get disenfranchised with it. They eventually get upset. They eventually start to hate because they don't get away from it. It's all about YouTube all the time. And when you're, when you're all about something all the time, it's very easy to get upset with it. It's very easy to see every little flaw that if you just do it every once in a while, you don't see. It doesn't bother you. Or if you walk away and come back, it's like, yeah, you know, I know that's there, but it, you know, whatever, it doesn't bother me. That's, you know, I'll go back to doing what I'm doing. Yeah, that is just the way it is. And some people who desperately are all about YouTube all the time, they forget why they are started making videos in the first place. They forget they made them just to be part of a community. They forget they were just doing it for the love of the game. And then all of a sudden it turns to something more. Some people it turns into all about, I want fame. I want attention. And truthfully, you can get some of that, but honestly, whoever, no matter the biggest YouTuber on YouTube, could walk down the street of my town and maybe one person would know who that person is. Now granted, I have a couple of college campuses, so some of the bigger channels might, if they walked right straight through the campus, might get some attention. But that's it. Some people, it's all about the response to their videos. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, everybody makes a video to get a response. But then there's the people who do it because they want to make a living off of it. And it starts off as, I make videos of something I love and I want to make a living. But some people, it turns different over time. It goes from, it's just about having fun while I possibly someday make a living to, this needs to be a living. I want this to be now. And the fun thing about YouTube, for those who haven't been around, you can never determine what video is going to hit. Okay? Some people who have gotten popular in our community would more likely tell you the video that actually got them noticed was not the video they thought would be the one. That you just can't predict what some people also are going to pay attention to what you do. It just, it just doesn't work that way. And a lot of people like think there's a formula. That in most cases, there's not. It's your personality. It's you make the videos you want and somehow people find it. Especially now more than ever. And all of a sudden, they're like, you know what? It's got to happen now. So all of a sudden, you know what? They start, I need the stuff. So maybe they decide to ask for money. Maybe they decide to threaten to leave if they, and to get attention. I've seen this happen several times. People threaten to leave because they didn't get attention. They get attention, but they don't get the attention they want. And then they're even more upset than they were before. And then let's say they do get the, maybe the money, maybe the attention. The next thing always seems to be, well, that's not getting me fast enough. What do I got to do now? What do I got to know? Maybe they decide they need to have giveaways. Which, by the way, if you're doing giveaways in your video, people are not watching your videos because they like your content. If you're doing giveaways, that means your content isn't good. That means you're, you're doing it because you don't think your content is good. At least that's what I think when someone does a giveaway over their video is because the, their content isn't very good. Or eventually they, they, leave, they explode. They just... They, they're so frustrated because they don't get what they want. And this doesn't necessarily have to do with money. I've seen a lot of smaller channels. And it's always the smaller channels in the community that have this blow up about YouTube is horrible and the people in the, the community are horrible and it's sad this, this has changed and it's not the way it used to be. And the truth of the matter is, when you pull it all down, 
that group they followed changed. There are a lot of people on top of my head I can think of that do this for fun. That do the things that people used to, that people said used to happen in the community. You just have to try a little harder to find those channels. That's all. That, that's just what it is. Yes, there's been, yes, there's a lot of people doing gameplay now. That's the easiest thing to do with very little work is make, record a gameplay. But now that's even not like it used to be because now you have to be careful of cutscenes because those will get you copyrighted. You have to be careful of music that could get you copyrighted. These are things now when you do a gameplay, you have to be very careful. Sounds could get you in trouble. Where it used to be, you could record anything, throw it up on YouTube, it's fine. I do think peop some people make this too much of their life. Heck, today, for example, my day off, I had the rare chance to actually, I, I took my son to school and went back to bed. And the cool thing about today was, I rarely miss, I usually miss his field trips and stuff at school because I work during the week, during the day, so I completely miss that stuff. And today, Luckily, they happen to have something going on today uh, they, that his kindergarten class were doing covering St. Patrick's Day. The first grade was covering China, and the second grade was covering Rome. And when you went in those classrooms, uh, a couple of each of the kids were standing in a certain area, and they were going to tell you about a certain specific thing about St. Patrick. And so I went in there, and my kid was excited because I never I never get to do that. And that was fun. That was exciting to go there and do something like that to me. Uh, today... Instead of watching a lot of YouTube, honestly, I actually went, was actually looking at my comic book collection, which for the most part, for the most part stopped around, for the most part stopped around 2002, the major collecting part of it. In one, in the, in the early 90s, I basically would go in and buy every comic book on the shelf and read every one of them. That's back in high school, you know, kind of thing. And then I got back into it during Civil War, and now I'm... A little bit back into it now. But today I went back and read the very first comic book I ever bought. Uh, it was around the time the Batman movie came out, the first one. It was around the time, I believe it was, the Fall of the Mutants uh, storyline was happening in Marvel. And this was the saga of the original Human Torch, issue number one miniseries. Now this is not the Fantastic Four Torch. This is the Torch from the 30s or 1940s, uh, around World War. It was basically made... I believe was made somehow tied in I believe Hitler and all that stuff and he's an android that basically has the same powers as of course the torch of the Fantastic Four and that was the comic book I first bought that got me into to buying comic books and I did that today I didn't stay away from YouTube but I think some people need to get away decompress from YouTube because if you're around all the time you will get mad about the drama maybe you'll get mad about Maybe if you're one of those people around all the time, you may end up looking at your views all the time or subscribers, and you and you just gotta learn those things don't matter. What matters is, are you having fun? If you're not, why not? Why are you forcing to stay doing something you don't enjoy doing? Why do you stay apart of something you don't like? I've always said this to people, and I'll say this to the very end. If you don't like the way channels do something in the community, you think there's something that should be this way, then make your channel that. Let's say trades, then make your channel, you trade with a bunch of people and do trades. If you tag, then do a bunch of tags. If you you don't think people are doing love of the game, then do videos on love of the game. Don't complain. Don't whine. Make what you think you want a gaming channel you want to be. That's what the point of your channel is. And if it's any other, if your channel is nothing, anything but that, then why why is it not that way? Because I always laugh when people are like, I don't like the way the community is, and, but your channel is like everybody else's. Well, I don't like the way it is. Well, then change it. Make a difference. You don't have to keep it the same. So anyway, what is your guys' opinion? Do you think people on YouTube make this too much of their life? Some people on YouTube make YouTube too much of their life? And why do you think they make it too much of their life? Love to hear your answers, video responses, and most definitely we'll talk about a couple of those in the next video on Thursday, since tomorrow is, of course, the live stream with me and the crew. It will be interesting to see if that ends up being another four-hour. There's a lot of great questions, a lot of great people involved. It was cool. So, the first thing we're going to talk about when we talk about videos today is 
Etheric777. He put up a video blog, I Am Moving. So those who've watched his videos over the years, or maybe have watched a video of his, you all, or maybe you watched when he used to he did a lot of the new net live stream, you know what his game room looks like, or the area he games at. Well, in this video, as he's talking about he's moving into a new place, you get to see what's left of the game room. And he basically says, worst case, he'll be gone for six weeks. So if you ever watch the video, go check it out. Go check out uh, what the game room looks like, what's left of it. Uh, for those who haven't followed him a long time, he now does gaming and he's into basically uh, remote control. I think mostly remote control helicopters, like things that fly now, basically is what he's into now. That's what he was. But the next video we're going to talk about is a channel that basically nobody's ever heard of. The videos on her channel give basically no views, and she believes she has 15 total subscribers, and that is Lady Una 2000 and she did a tag video, and it was my favorite Xbox 360 games tag. So, this is what I like to call, we should call Operation Help. We should go to somebody's channel who nobody knows, and go watch their video, and leave a comment, or leave a response, say, hey, welcome to the community, because today you get buried. So, I'm going to show... Actually, my five favorite games on 360. The first one, I'm an 80s kid. There's no surprise here. Ghostbusters, the video game. Absolutely love this game. It is actually technically a sequel to the Ghostbuster movies. It was approved by them, and it is really, really cool. If you love the old, a lot of nostalgic in this. If you really love the Ghostbuster movies, check it out. And this is a game I absolutely love. Now, I grown up, I was an Incredible Hulk fan, okay? I loved the TV show. I had the pajamas. You know, I was a big... Hulk fan. Run around the house saying Hulk smash. So this is the Incredible Hulk game by Sega. This is a really fun game. A open world smash things up game. If you love that type of game, you should really try this game. It is a awesome, it is an underlooked game in my opinion. Uh, awesome game. And of course, this one's no surprise, Skyrim. Love the world of this game. Just love everything about this game. A lot of fun with it. And getting back into it. And of course, this one is, quite frankly, my fighting arcade series that I absolutely fell in love with, and that was Mortal Kombat. This is Mortal Kombat 9. Love this game. Love how, to me, it got back to what made Mortal Kombat 2 and those games so awesome. Gotta get Injustice, too, because that looks awesome, too. And since I am a Transformers fan, of course, Fall of Cybertron. Awesome game. Love all the different characters you play with, from the Dinobots to, to Optimus to Bumblebee to... You know, Bruticus, just a, a fun game. Love the story. So that is my response to her video. Go check out her video. So next, we're going to get to a game I just never knew existed. And this is from David Hass 3 L. Hoff. I know some people say, why don't you just call it David Hass Hoff? Well, he has a three. That's what I'm going to say. And it is Coca-Cola Kid Review for the Game Gear. Didn't know this game existed. Didn't know they made a product game on the Game Gear of this game. So if you should check out that video. And the next one has to do with Wreck-It Ralph, because I know a lot of people love that movie. I love that movie. I have it on Blu-ray. It is from TB46667. Hidden video game phrase messages in, inside Wreck-It Ralph. Go check it out. He shows uh, the writing on the wall and, what, and tells you what each of those messages mean and what game they're tied to. Next up, I got into this kick about watching uh, pinball and arcade machines, and I watched Retro Repairs. Revolution X MAME shooting gun cabinet. He made this custom cabinet. It looks It's a MAME cabinet. It has more than one game in it. It looks really awesome. If you're interested, go check that out. And I don't know why I always say go check it out. I just do. And then to get a pinball machine in the mix, go check out Arcade UK, a pinball machine I did not know existed that Sega made. It is called Sega Starship Troopers Pinball Machine Repair, and he explains how he repaired it. And again, I love the first Starship Trooper movie. Because of its campiness, it's, you know, and uh, really cool to see this pinball machine and the fact it was done by Sega. And our last video of the day is actually a contest. And it's from The Virgin, The Virgin. <sighs> that is totally wrong. It could just be like, I can't believe you called me a virgin. I'm not a virgin. It is the Vintage Gamer USA, the Vintage Gamers 500 subscriber contest. So basically, and I know there's been a lot of these contests lately, and it's always cool that people hit a mouse and say, you know what, I want to give it back. And when they do a cool contest with something, in this case, here's what you have to do. They want to know your three favorite things you have in your video game collection. It could be a game, a system, etc. Anything video game related. To enter, please follow these three simple rules. Rule one, you must be a subscriber. 
Rule two, you must like this video. And rule t three, you have to make a video response. You have three weeks to submit your entry. The last date for entry is March 26, 2013. My three most favorite video game related things in my collection. That is a tough one. That really is. Uh, to be honest with you, I would say the first thing has to be, for me, my action set NES, because the NES is like one of my, again, favorite systems of all time. The second thing, that's very tough. The second thing would actually, I'd have to say, would actually be uh, Metroid and NES. I absolutely love that game. And the third video game related thing, I'm going to go get it right now, actually. I'm going to show you. This is really cool. It's something I've never shown in a video, I don't think, before. And it is something really awesome. That I actually found in a garage sale about a year and a half ago. And that is a Color Forms action set, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. If you've never seen this, this came out in 1989 by Color Forms. It is a really cool thing. This is awesome. Uh, my son's messed with it. That's why it's... And here it is, just cardboard, and this... Oh, now one falls off. And the guys are just stickers. Like this. And you basically just stick them on here, and it's supposed to stick. So that's a really cool set. I absolutely love this thing. It's just one of the cool things in my collection that I've never actually shown. Believe it or not, I don't believe. So, anyway guys, that is everything for the video today. Can't wait to hear you guys' responses, comments, and I will see you guys tomorrow. 8 o'clock central for the live stream. See you guys then.